Yo, what up you guys, HSTS here, and um, I'm going to do a review on Gears of War 2, Marcus Phoenix in disguise as the Theron Locust guy. So anyway, so let's get started with the review. For his accessories, he comes with an um, a alternative head. You could switch this head for that head, but um, I don't really like this head. It, I don't know, it just looks odd to me. I don't know, it just doesn't look right to me for some reason. But the paint applications and sculpting is nice. I do like the detail. It kind of has a little glossy finish around here that looks cool. So yeah, the paint applications on the head isn't too bad, but I would rather keep that head for some reason. I just don't like this head. I don't know. I, it just doesn't look good to me. And then he does come with an other accessory, which is his Lancer. This one, this Lancer has a very, very nice detail. I do like all, like, the little added detail and stuff. Um, right here where the chainsaw is, I believe that is blood, which is a little cool touch. Very, very cool. And on the other side of the Lancer, this thing folds out. I think, I don't know what this thing is for, I guess, for him to hold it. But yeah, and then he does have this peg right here that you can peg onto the back of the figure. As you can see that little peg hole right there, you just peg this into there. So yeah, so you could have him wearing his Lancer on his back like he usually does with his regular um, Gears uniform. For a quick size comparison, here is Marcus. Um, next to the extremist Iron Man and as you can see this figure is definitely way bulkier than the Iron Man and a bit taller so yeah this figure doesn't really fit well in with Marvel Legends and stuff so getting a closer look into the figure the head sculpt is decent I do like it I like how they did the scar going down his face and the likeness from him and from the game is definitely there it looks pretty cool I do like the little details and stuff like how they do the teeth the eyes and this little goatee right there I also like how they do the bandana thing or whatever you call it there is like a little texturing in the bandana so it does kinda make it look realistic and I do like it how right here you can barely see it on right here is the I believe the Gears of War sign or Gears of War logo so that looks really cool and yeah the head sculpt is very nice and then getting into the disguise which is a Theron disguise just looks so awesome it looks really really sick and dope I really really dig it there's a lot of shading and stuff going on like right here you could kinda see like there's a little shading right here and stuff a little black wash it also kind of looks like, like right here on the shoulder pad and stuff. It just looks really, really cool how they did all the little added touches and the paint applications and all the texturing. The texturing is great, and they make it look realistic, like right here on the forearm. Looks really cool. And the neat thing about this figure is he's wearing the Theron disguise with his Gears of War uniform. As you can see right here, I actually noticed that when I was posing him around. So right here, you can see like some parts of his uniform, which looks really, really awesome. So I like how they um, added that little touch. So yeah, overall, the detail and stuff on this figure is really great. I like how they do the stuff here with all the buckles and stuff. And then the belt looks amazing. Looks really cool. And it's these little, I don't know, skirt or stuff hanging down is actually a little soft rubber so you could still move the legs and stuff so I like that and the, de the detail on the back of the figure is also great as well like right here and stuff and uh, I think this is because how he is packaged like right here this thing is bent forward and this thing is bent downward a little yeah but I think that's how he's packaged and it just kinda distorted him so, uh, yeah, and the legs are also very nicely detailed. Right here, it kind of looks like there's a little silver around here in the armor, which looks cool. And then the boots also looks awesome. There's a little shading around there, which looks awesome in the little buckles and everything. 
So very, very cool figure. The detail is definitely awesome. Overall, the detail, sculpting, and everything is very, very cool. Okay, so for his articulation, his head goes up and down. Um, it can't really go up. Oops, I farted right there, but... Oh, sorry about that. I apologize for my farting. I blame it on my burrito. So anyways, back what I was saying. His head goes up and down. It goes up, not too high. It doesn't go down that low, but yeah. It just barely goes up and down, but it's the joint still works. And then it does go through 60. It could, but these thingies kind of hinder it right here. So it could only go side to side. Well, I suppose it can. It could go as far as this much. So, yeah, it could go, like, look, look to his left or right that much. So, yeah, anyways, then the arms go 360, and then they do go in and out. 360 at the bicep, and then it does bend at the elbow, and it can rotate at the elbow as well. And then 360 at the wrist, and then the wrists go up and down. And then he has this waist joint that goes 360 and up and down, which I think is awesome. So, and that joint is nice and hidden very well, so pretty neat. And then the legs, it's kind of a weird type of joint. It goes up and down, but not straight. It goes up and down diagonal. See? And i seen this happen to other figures. I think there's other Gears of War figures that kind of have that weird leg thing that makes the leg go diagonal. And I hate figures that do that, but on this figure, I think it's necessary just because this thingy majigger can get in the way if it just goes up and down straight. So I guess it is necessary for it to go diagonal-wise. But yeah, it still goes up and down. And then the leg bends. Or not the leg, the knee bends. But it doesn't bend all the way like it's supposed to. It's supposed to be um, a single jointed knee. But a single jointed knee is pretty much like um, 90 degrees. This is only 45 degrees around there. As you can see, it doesn't bend that far. But oh well, still pretty cool. And it does rotate, which is awesome. So his articulation is okay. It is very limited. But I still like the articulation on this figure. So his articulation isn't all that bad. You could still pose him around with his Lancer, which looks really, really cool. So for my final thoughts on this Marcus Phoenix Theron disguise figure. This figure isn't all that bad. Even though the articulation may be limited, it's still okay. But the detail and sculpting is absolutely great. It's phenomenal. I do like all the nice added details and everything. Especially like this little extra accessory, the alternate head, which is very nice detail and stuff. And so, yeah, the figure isn't all that bad. He's not really, uh, like, a posable figure. He's not, like, one of those figures you would pose around and stuff. He's more of one of those figures that you would put on display. But anyways, yeah, this figure is very cool. If you like articulated figures, this figure might not be your type. But since I like Gears of War, and I finally beat the Gears of I think I beat the Gears of War... Gears of War 2 a few weeks ago. I know I beat Gears of War 3 like a few days ago, but anyways, yeah. But this figure is still really, really cool. And again, if you don't like articulated, if you do like articulated figures, this figure wouldn't really be the right type for you. But since I like Gears of War, I like this figure as well. This figure is awesome. And the Gears of War fans, it's definitely recommended. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.